Right now, an overnight fire in Madison now involves a police investigation after someone says two people forced their way into an apartment. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. We are doing our Friday dance this morning. It is May 24th. We finally made it, unfortunately. The weather. What is this, Hattie? Not a finger Come on. snap and forecast. We like sure. two days in a row there. That's all we could get. <laughs> you guys asked for so much. Right? <laughs> I know. So picky. I know. No, it is a very wet start this morning. A very dreary start to the holiday weekend if you're getting an early start today. It's also an alert day. It's going to be a pretty busy day in the weather department today. We have steady rain this morning. A second round of showers and thunderstorms developing later today into tonight. That one may contain some hail, high winds, as well as some heavy rain. We've already had some uh, heavy rain move through the Madison area. It's starting to break up in southwestern Wisconsin, which is good news. So there'll be a little bit of a break in the precipitation activity. As we go through the day, temperatures climbing from the 50s this morning to a high of 70 this afternoon. It's not quite as warm, but again, grab that rain gear before you head out the door. Here's a look at your first alert traffic map. Roads are wet, but we're not seeing any major delays yet. Not even too many brake lights showing up on the Beltline and Stoughton Road, so that's good news. Looking around Dane County, no accidents or incidents to report right now. But again, keep in mind with the wet roads, I want to add just a little bit of extra time. It tends to slow things down. Might be hard to see through the raindrops, but we do have good weather in the holiday weekend forecast. We do. There's some sunshine, warmer temperatures, and some dry weather as well. Just hang in there. Yes. Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. 602 right now. Breaking news into the Channel 3000 Alert Center. Janesville police say they've arrested three teenagers for arson and obstruction. Police responded to Bond Park at about 6 last night for a report of a fire in the bathrooms there. Witnesses were able to provide police with a vehicle description and the teens were found and arrested a few blocks away. We also have new developments this morning on a fire on Madison's north side. The fire was first reported just after 930 last night in an apartment building on Ruskin Street. That's near North Sherman. According to Madison police, that fire started after one of the people living there came home and two men forced their way into the apartment. The resident locked themselves in a bathroom to hide before smelling smoke. That person was able to get out of the building OK through the bathroom window. Fire crews were able to put out that fire around 90 minutes later and no injuries were reported. Anyone with information on who may have forced their way into that building is being asked to call the mass and police. The man who admitted to kidnapping Jamie Kloss and killing her parents is scheduled to be sentenced today. Jake Patterson pleaded guilty to those crimes back in March. Kloss was held captive by Patterson for 88 days before she was able to escape in January. Patterson said he wanted to plead guilty to spare Jamie and her family from the pain of hearing the details in a trial. Last week, Jamie was honored by the state legislature for her bravery with a Hometown Hero Award. Patterson is facing a life sentence in prison. CBS This Morning will have live reports from Barron. That's starting at 7. It's been nearly a year since a teen was found dead in Iowa County, and few questions have been answered so far. On May 31st of last year, a body of 13-year-old was discovered on this property in the town of Mineral Point. Around that time, authorities did confirm the death as suspicious and said the investigation would take a significant amount of time. Authorities still will not release a name or the manner of death because the investigation is still ongoing. It's been turned over to the Iowa County District Attorney. Attorney Matt Allen is on the case and has not gotten back to News 3 now, but deputies at the Sheriff's Office say they're waiting for test results, but will not say what kind. At the state capitol this morning, supporters of public schools say a $500 million proposed K-12 funding increase doesn't go far enough, but GOP leaders say it's the best they can do. The Republican-controlled Budget Committee passed that proposal yesterday. It's less than half of what Governor Evers had asked for. One of the biggest points of contention is special education funding. The plan only provides a $100 million increase for special ed, which is a sixth of what the governor proposed. Republicans are calling on the governor to sign that proposal, but education advocacy groups say he should veto it if he feels it's inadequate. We're here to demand a budget that works for every kid in every public school in the state and starts to do the slow, hard, expensive work of closing the gaps that the state has created. They wanted a predictable growth in resources for schools, something that they can count on, something that doesn't have to be uh, reduced in the future because we see a downturn in the economy. I believe this accomplishes that. 
A statement saying the budget proposal is an increase, but it falls short of the demand schools face. The full budget will likely be sent to the legislature sometime next month. A former Madison teacher has been charged with sexual assault of a minor in California. Hector Vasquez pleaded not guilty to felony charges in Redwood City, including unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor. Vasquez was fired from a Madison school back in 2006 after parents filed a sexual harassment complaint and a police investigation found he was a liability. He was hired by a school in California in 2011. With temperatures on the rise in Madison, the pesky algae blooms are right around the corner. Yesterday, the Madison Clean Lakes Alliance was out helping their citizen monitors, taking their first water quality measurements of the year. That data collected is then put on the organization's website for up-to-date water, qu water quality information. These volunteers collect data at 79 points, including all 25 beaches on Lake Mendota, Monona, Wingra, Wabisa, and Kaganza. All right, from the ducks to the bucks. Turns out my bucks in six chance just weren't enough. Womp womp. I know. We are now talking bucks in seven after a loss to the Raptors at home. The Bucks took an early lead, but it dwindled to just three points by halftime. They lost that lead in the second half, and it came down to the wire. The final score, 105 to 99. Game six is Saturday in Toronto, where the Raptors could end the Bucks season. We'll have more from Kevin Lewis coming up a little bit later on News 3 Now this morning. At least I love your spirit. I'm trying. Bucks in seven. They can do it. <laughs> All right, 606 right now. From strangers to sisters, this next pair of Madison women thought they already had met their lifelong best friends until a chance run in with each other. Now they're inseparable and the subjects of this week's Why We Walk story. And poor Hattie has been getting drenched <laughs> outside on the Hattie Oak patio this morning. It's definitely a wet start to our weekend. Flash flood watches are even in effect. She's in next with our Alert Day forecast. That's on News 3 Now this morning.
Good morning from the Hattie El Patio. Splashing in the puddles this morning. I really have waterfront property here on the uh, Hattie El Patio with rain coming down all morning long. It has let up a little bit, which is the good news, but it's still pretty steady right now. So you need all the rain gear today. It's going to be a very wet Friday across southern Wisconsin. Let's take a look at the uh, graphics this morning. It is an alert day for the area. The showers this morning are not expected to be severe, but a second round later this afternoon into this evening that develops could produce some strong to severe thunderstorms. Hail, high winds possible, as well as some heavy rain. In fact, the amount of rain possible has prompted a flash flood watch for most of southern Wisconsin. It starts at 7 p.m. this evening and goes through 7 o'clock Saturday morning. So if you are camping tonight, it's going to be a very wet night. Be aware of the potential for the rises on rivers and creeks around southern Wisconsin. Our severe weather outlook for southern Wisconsin has changed quite a bit from this time yesterday. That slight risk area expanding to the north and east, now including all of Dane County and southeastern Wisconsin. That marginal risk extends back up towards La Crosse and Toma. Here's a look at what's happening this morning. That rain is starting to let up a little bit in southwestern Wisconsin, so good news. We'll get a little bit of a break, but there is a lot of moisture with this particular storm. Showers and thunderstorms continue to develop across Iowa, and they're all headed in this direction today. So here's a look at your GFS future track forecast model for this entire weekend. Today is going to be pretty wet, especially for central and southern Wisconsin less of a rain chance to the north. Now Saturday will be completely dry in the north woods. There is a chance for rain early and then again late on Saturday, but most of the day will actually be dry and quite mild. Sunday looks dry for the entire state with sunshine and pleasant temperatures, but rain is expected to return on Memorial Day Monday. Here's a live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam this morning. A very gray and wet start to this Friday morning. Temperatures have been holding pretty steady in the 50s. We're at 53 right now in Madison and Lone Rock, as well as Platteville. 55 in Janesville, that's the warm spot. Here's a look at your future track forecast model. It has a pretty good handle on the rain moving through the area this morning, letting up by the lunch hour. Temperatures will climb to highs right around 70, but after 4 p.m., fair game for some showers and thunderstorms to then redevelop for the area and continue overnight tonight. There will likely be several rounds of rain moving through the region. It all comes to an end Saturday morning, but here's a look at your rain potential. We're talking one to three inches for southern Wisconsin, so that's a lot of rain, and that is why that flash flood watch goes into effect at 7 o'clock tonight. Here's a look at your extended forecast. There will be a good chunk of Saturday that's going to be dry. All of Sunday looks dry and then wet again on Monday. So when you look at the weekend as a whole, actually not that bad. Rain chances continue though into the first part of next week. Now let's get a look at those traffic maps this morning with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. Well, quite yet. Other roads here in Dane County not looking too bad. Give yourself an extra minute or two on northbound Verona Road and Stoughton Road approaching the Beltline. Nothing to slow you down around campus. Volume is not an issue at this point. And other routes coming into the city, they're still moving at the usual speeds with no major crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Josh, thank you, and Hattie, thank you as well. So we've been sharing the stories of women you'll see in this year's Susan G. Komen More Than Pink Walk all month long in our series, Why We Walk. Amidst the sea of pink you'll see that Saturday morning will be two best friends, once strangers, now sisters. Our Christina Laurie joins us in studio with her story. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Josh and Leah. Well, like many women, Deb and Patty love to talk shop, laugh, and travel. They're also both breast cancer survivors, although that's just a footnote to this fabulous friendship. This is why they walk. Best friends. Sisters. Sisters. A bond so strong, even Patty and Deb question whether they're family. I've never had a sister before, so um, I'm an only child. The pair met seven years ago after bumping into each other several times around town. Well, and it's cool because at our age, you really don't maybe meet that lifelong best friend. Both from Madison's east side, they never knew how much else they had in common. Shopping, yep. garage selling. As we got to know each other, we just explored how many things are so similar between us. A few weeks into their friendship, they found another similarity. And we said, oh, wife, well, I had breast cancer. Oh, so did so I. So did I. Deb's doctor found a dimple on her breast in 96. 
it was cancer. Nobody, none of my friends or family had ever gone through this. Six sessions of chemo and 33 rounds of radiation later. It came back again. Seven years had passed. This time was worse than the first, both physically and emotionally. You go through all that and everything is fine and you go about with your lives again and then when you find out that you have it again and it's a different cancer, it was a faster growing cancer. Around the time of Deb's second bout with the disease, Patty was diagnosed too. They didn't know each other at the time. Unlike Deb, who went through chemo and radiation, I avoided all that because it hadn't spread. Patty found her lump while taking a shower. It was malignant, so she opted right away for a mastectomy. In many ways, I felt like I didn't belong quite to this, this group of women who've been through so much because I didn't. And everyone I say that to does that. No, you had, you had breast cancer. It's being told that you have cancer, and I think that is unites everyone. But it doesn't define them. It's just a bump in the road we went through, and we were both lucky. Lucky to laugh. I make jokes about we make jokes. my slap chest. <laughs> lucky for life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Lucky for garage sales? <laughs> we weren't going to plug Our, that. No. no. <laughs> Lucky for sisterhood. It's been um, really good to have Deb come into my life. Okay, now I have chills. Five <laughs> years ago, Deb joined Patty's team called the Patty Wagon, but here's where you come in. Patty, Deb, and another friend, Lynn, all are breast cancer survivors, so they're searching for a new team name. If you have any creative ideas, including those three names, again, Patty, Deb, and Lynn, please write us and let us know. And if you'd like to donate to Komen or Patty and Deb's team, we have links on how you can do both up on our website, channel3000.com, and you can still participate in this year's walk. You can register. This year's event is two weeks from tomorrow on June 8th. Oh, uh, they seem so spunky. They were just, I wanted to join their friendship. They said they're still accepting new friends. That's awesome. Such a powerful story. But Thank you so much for sharing that. Of when and where Thank that you happened. guys. All right, 617, your time now. We are conflicted in the newsroom this morning on whether the Aladdin remake is a dream or a nightmare. I'm a fan. I'm excited about <laughs> I this. I am too. We'll see if it's a whole new world or just another average remake. That's what our producer James thinks. <laughs> womp womp. That's coming up in Will Loper's preview of the live action flick. And maybe not the best weather to take a magic carpet ride today as it's an alert day with a lot of rain in the forecast. Hattie's updating us on the weekend when News 3 Now This Morning continues.
Welcome back at 621 on a Friday morning. We're waking up with a lot of rain. It's been wet the last yes. couple of hours. Rain started about three o'clock here in Madison. You can see from the uh, Capitol Dome, pretty cloudy start to the day. The rain is starting to let up though in southwestern Wisconsin. Let's walk over here and show you the radar map. You can see that there are some breaks in the rain activity across Grant County. All this activity is sliding off to the north and east. So that's good news. The heavy steady rain has passed through the area. There is more rain on on the way though for later on today. So keep that umbrella close by today. Temperatures have been pretty steady with the clouds and rain 55 in Janesville, 53 in Platteville, 51 in the Dells. We've been holding steady at 53 here in Madison. Your bus stop weather forecast has temperatures climbing to highs close to 70 degrees later on this afternoon. There'll be a break in the rain through the lunch hour and the early afternoon time frame. But later on tonight, rain will return to southern Wisconsin. It is an alert day for the region with temperatures climbing to high of 70. We're looking at 80 though on Saturday with another chance for showers and thunderstorms early and then again late in the day. Have a wonderful day. Looks like a perfect day for a movie as Disney's string of live action remakes continues this weekend with Aladdin. I'm so excited for this one. Our film critic oh. Will Loper is here with a preview of the film in theaters now. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad you're excited, Leah. I know oh, what I mean. Uh -oh. Aladdin's my favorite and the, mostly these Disney live action remakes have been kind of... Come on. Uh, okay, all right. So Prince Ali, <laughs> a fabulous he, is back along with Abu and a blue Will Smith. Now, is he still strong as ten men and have a world-class menagerie? Hop on a magic carpet ride and take a look. <laughs> that old street rat Aladdin is back at it using a genie to try to win the heart of Jasmine and defeat the evil Jafar. Hey, can you make me a prince? There is a lot of gray area in make me a prince. I could just make you a prince. Oh, no. Y'all see my palace? You look like a prince on the outside, but I didn't change anything on the inside. Showtime. No, I'm in charge, okay? I say when it's time. Really? Aladdin is rated PG-13. Had to leave it off again. One stuck, song stuck in your head. You know, we were talking off camera. You really can't replace Robin Williams. No. But... But so, what? They, but have, what? they <laughs> have live singing. They have... You guys have tried to stay positive. They have singing and uh, Will Smith is not the best I've yeah. read that he oh it's not I mean he gets a rap at the end of the credits which is more Will Smith's territory but uh, see we said you can't take that job you can't take Robin no it's Williams huge job. shoes to fill yeah you'll have a preview or a review rather on yep. Monday uh, I think so yeah and book smart as well cool. all right thanks well thank you so, turns out it won't be Bucks and Six after all, and now their season will come down to a must-win game this weekend. We'll have a report from Milwaukee after their Game 5 loss. The ending may not be what Bucks fans wanted, but at least there was an entertaining moment early in the game. <laughs> we'll tell you about a big showdown between Aaron Rodgers and one of his offensive linemen that stole the show last night. Stay with us. <laughs>
Hundreds of people gather at the Capitol to share their thoughts on abortion rights. We'll tell you what both sides had to say. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for sticking with us for the final half hour of News 3 Now This Morning on this Friday. Hattie's out on the patio, splashing around because it's raining. Yeah, always. She's rocking the umbrella, the scarf, and the rain boots this morning. <laughs> All three of them. Yeah, it's a, a little chilly outside. Not too bad this morning, but it's definitely a wet start to the day. Maybe a little tough to get going this morning and get motivated with all this rain in the area. It's an alert day though, you should be aware of that. There still is the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms later this afternoon into tonight. Heavy rain is possible as well, and that has prompted a flash flood watch that will go into effect starting at 7 p.m. this evening for most of southern Wisconsin. So if you have outdoor plans later today, keep in mind that's likely going to involve a lot of rain. Now, as far as the rain this morning, we've had some heavy rain at times here in Madison. Still pretty steady coming down on the west side, but it is starting to break up in southwestern Wisconsin. That's the good news. There is another round of rain, though, on the way later today. As you head out the door, don't forget the umbrella and the rain boots. It's pretty wet outside. Everything is just a big puddle here in the Hattie patio. Uh, temperatures will climb to highs real close to 70 later on today. Let's get a look at those traffic maps this morning. As you can imagine, roads are wet across the area, so be careful with those uh, wet conditions. A few brake lights showing up on the Beltline right around Stoughton Road, but nothing that's going to slow you down too much just yet. It also is a little slow on Verona Road as you head towards the Beltline from PD, adding just an extra minute there. All right, Hattie. Yeah, we're definitely going to want to have a little bit more time, I think, if we're yeah. heading out today. Yeah, a little extra patience. You know the roads are going to get busier as we head towards the afternoon. So if you're leaving right now, though, not looking too bad. All right, Hattie, thank you. You're welcome. We start this half hour with some national headlines. President Trump heads to Japan today as his fight with Democrats continues. The president is directing the intelligence community to cooperate with Attorney General William Barr as he looks into the origins of the Russia investigation. Meanwhile, the man who led that investigation, Robert Mueller, says he doesn't want to publicly testify in front of Congress. He's reportedly willing to talk with Congress behind closed doors, but fears a public hearing would become a political spectacle. We are tracking some uh, breaking news into the Channel 3000 Alert Center this morning. British Prime Minister Theresa May says she's resigning effective June 7th. That will spark an election to determine who will be Britain's next prime minister. May has been pressured to step down for her handling of the Brexit. The official date of the UK leaving the European Union has been pushed back multiple times as Parliament has refused to accept May's Brexit deals. Harvey Weinstein and his accusers have reportedly reached a $44 million settlement over alleged sexual misconduct. Attorneys said yesterday the money would be paid by insurance policies, not by Weinstein himself. $14 million will go toward legal fees and the remaining $30 million will go toward the victims, creditors and former Weinstein Company employees. This settlement is not related to the criminal charges against Weinstein. His trial in that case is set to begin on September 9th. In more local news, hundreds of Minnesotians wanted to have their voices heard with recent laws passed restricting women's access to safe abortions. Protesters filled the Capitol steps last night. They said what brought them out were lawmakers across the country, like Alabama and Georgia, pushing legislation to law that severely restricts access to safe abortions. They also wanted to send a message to Wisconsin lawmakers who've advanced four anti-abortion bills. Counter-protesters also attended, saying they wanted to support unborn children. Governor Tony Evers has said he plans to veto those bills. We are following updates on the crash in Monona we told you about yesterday that involved a teen driver. Five people are in the hospital this morning with serious injuries after that crash on Monona Drive Wednesday night. Police say a 16-year-old boy with a teen passenger was driving nearly double the speed limit when he hit a Honda that was turning left into the Taco John's parking lot. The 16-year-old's passenger was ejected from that vehicle and the car rolled several times. Both vehicles involved were totaled. Police say while it was a bad crash, it easily could have been a fatal one. All right, 6.32 your time now. Another rough one for the Bucks last night. Milwaukee lost game five at home to the Toronto Rappers, Raptors 105-99. to Yeah, it turns out Leah's in-studio chanting, yeah, not doing the trick. I tried. Here's Kevin Lewis with a recap for Milwaukee. 
Stars step up in big moments, and Kawhi Leonard was that in Game 5, putting up 35 points, 7 rebounds, and 9 assists. And it was back and forth shots down the stretch till the Bucks had the ball with 26.8 seconds to go. Malcolm Brogdon turned it over. Toronto called timeout. Then they got a dunk from Pascal Siakam. They made it a two-possession game, took the air out of the building, and took the air out of Game 5. You know, we're not, we're not thinking about winning two right now. Obviously, we just want to go out there and get game six. Um, we've been resilient all year, and uh, we're going to rely on each other and lean on each other as we've done all year and uh, go out and uh, compete as hard as we can. Well, the Bucks have lost three games for the first time all season. It's a one-game season for them now as game six goes back to Toronto on Saturday night with the Bucks trailing 3-2. to two. Tip off 7.30 on TNT. At the Pfizer Forum, I'm Kevin Lewis. News 3 Now this morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Lewis. All right, one highlight of the night. Packers offensive lineman David Bakhtiari became a hero of sorts by chugging beers during the game. After downing two of them, you see him challenging his teammate on the other side of the court. That's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> kind of struggling there. Not quite on his offensive tackles level, at least when it comes to beer chugging. Then, just to rub it in, look at the seriousness in that man's eyes. Bakhtiari chugs a third beer. That's oh right, my three. gosh. Look at that speed. That was intense. I said earlier, you know, you kind of <laughs> had to have a drink after that loss. Yeah, I think there were a lot of people in that same boat last night. Bucks and seven. Bucks and seven. They can do it. <laughs> All right, if you are traveling for Memorial Day weekend, we have some good news about the prices you'll be paying at the pump. And if you're worried about the weather ruining any of your weekend plans, Chris Reese is in next to tell us what we can expect wherever you may be headed with his travel forecast for the weekend. Thanks for watching News 3 Now this morning.
All right, so with that stormy alert day forecast we have today, we thought it would be appropriate to share this photo out of Oregon. Monica sent this in. I think this is of a shelf cloud. Let's ask our our chief friendly meteorologist over here, Chris Reese. Is that right? Yes, that is a shelf cloud. Yes. Yes. Chris, you just wish it was a shelfie. Oh, <laughs> I know. I he know. does love those. Yeah, I like shelfies too. Thank you so much for sharing, Monica. That's a beautiful picture. If you have a picture you'd like to share, you can go to our social media pages and just use that hashtag MyNews3Morning so we and I can pick out our favorites and put them right here on the show. A shelfie, please. A shelfie, please. You are paying around 274 this morning for a gallon of regular gas in Madison, which is steady from this time last week, but about a dime below the national average. That's some good news if you're joining the other 746,000 Wisconsinites. AAA expects to be hitting the road for the big holiday weekend. With fuel costs hovering around 3 bucks per gallon nationwide, nearly 43 million Americans will be kicking off the unofficial start of summer vacation by traveling to out-of-town destinations. AAA says this would be the second highest travel volume since 2000 and the highest total since 2005. If your family's hitting the road, remember to buckle up. That Click It or Ticket campaign runs through June 2nd here in Wisconsin. So it might cost you a little less to get where you're going this weekend, but of course, all eyes are on the weather. Yep, Chris Reese is here with everything you need to know before taking to the road or boarding your plane. Chris? That's right, guys. We are watching it, and of course, we've had a lot of severe weather instances across parts of the country this week, so a lot of folks want to know what they may be dealing with. And for one, if you're traveling around Wisconsin, we actually have a threat for severe weather ourselves. That is going to be just today. We have a risk for tornadoes across the southern tier of the state. A few tornadoes could be possible later on this afternoon and evening. We do have a little bit of an elevated risk for some hail as well, along with wind in excess of 60 miles per hour. But it's not just Wisconsin. We are talking this risk all the way down towards Chicago, over towards parts of central and eastern Michigan. And then that goes back towards the south and west as well. That slight risk for severe storms digging all the way towards southwest Texas. This is just today into tomorrow that severe risk continues. We're talking from southern Iowa through the panhandle of Texas, southwestern Kansas through north panhandle through the northern panhandle of Texas. We'll see the greatest risk for severe storms tomorrow. Then again, in some of the same areas being impacted today and then over towards Detroit, places like Cleveland and over towards parts of New York into Sunday. We go back towards the plains with that threat for severe weather once again. So each and every single day going through this weekend will feature a chance for thunderstorms, but we are also watching that risk for flash flooding. This is your excessive rainfall outlook for today. You see that stretches from parts of Wisconsin back through Texas. And then as we move into Saturday, we're talking southern Iowa, northern Missouri, all the way back through Kansas and parts of Oklahoma under the gun for excessive rainfall and flash flooding and to Sunday we go from North Texas all the way into parts of southern Nebraska. So nonetheless things are going to be active in terms of being stormy where it's not stormy folks. It is going to be hot. We're talking upper 90s and close to triple de uh, triple degree heat as you work your way down south. Check out those highs tomorrow. This is Saturday at two places like Jacksonville, Florida could see temperatures near 100 degrees. That continues into Sunday as well. So things are going to be very active. But if you're flying, airport delays, at least at the moment, are non-existent. Hmm. The good news is yeah. back on a Friday. <laughs> There's the good news. It's a little bit of everything. You're talking storms along with heat. And I actually just saw something uh, on Twitter moments ago of snow in one of the national no. parks in the Rockies. <laughs> so oh, no. There's a little bit of everything oh. this weekend, but outside of the storms, it's going to be hot across the south and a little bit cooler in the western Rockies. A little bit of everything. Yep. All right, Chris, thank you. My pleasure. 641, your time now. It's going to be a wet start to that holiday weekend. Chris knows it. Hattie's had the umbrella out all morning. You're going to need one too. She has what we need to know about flash flood watches happening later tonight on this alert day. But first it is May 24th and we want to say happy birthday to Connor, Sadie, Jade and all the other kids turning three today. Oh. Thanks for celebrating with us on News 3 Now this morning.
645 on this Friday and a live look at the Beltline right now where there is a wet commute wherever you're headed this morning, whether it's to work or out of town for the long weekend. We do have an alert day in the forecast and Hattie will get to that here in just a moment. If you're looking for something to do on this Memorial Day weekend, here's what's going on in the 608. Oh yeah, the big outdoor Madison music event taking place this and every Memorial Day weekend is of course our very favorite, the world's largest brat fest. Woo! Plenty of sporting and music options to choose from at the fest, whether it's running in a 5K, a 10K, or a one mile race on Saturday morning, or taking in one of nearly 100 musical acts. This year's headliner includes Smash, Smash Mouth, Randy Hauser, and Steve Adler of Guns N' Roses. Broadfest starts today and runs through Sunday. If you're looking for music without the big crowds, the Worst Times Festival, the annual alternative to Broadfest, puts 35 Madison bands on five stages of its own at the High Noon Saloon Brink Lounge Brass Ring Complex all day Sunday. The lineup includes The North Co, Joe Prince and The Cost, The Civil Engineers, just to name a few. All proceeds benefit the Madison Area Music Association. That runs from 11 a.m. to midnight on Sunday. Hattie's keeping an eye on the forecast to see if we can get out and about on our holiday weekend. How's it looking, Hattie? I am looking at it. It's going to be a wet start to this weekend if you're counting today. Here's a look outside from the Edgewater Sky Camp. Still raining downtown Madison. Today is an alert day for the area, so be aware of that. No severe weather expected this morning, but later on this afternoon into this evening, a second round of showers and thunderstorms is expected to develop. This one may contain hail and high winds, as well as the potential for some pretty heavy rain across southern Wisconsin. Those rain totals that are possible have prompted a flash flood watch for the county shaded in green. This does include Madison and Dane County, Janesville's in it, as well as Milwaukee and Kenosha. So south central and southeastern Wisconsin. Here's a look at total precipitation over the next 24 hours or so. A general one to almost three inch total is possible for southern Wisconsin. So some very heavy rain on the way tonight. Now a look at the severe weather outlook that has shifted as well. That slight risk area moving to the north and east, including Dane County and all of southeastern Wisconsin. Main threats would be large hail and high winds. But again, there is that potential for some flooding as well. Now look at the radar map this morning around here. Things are quieting down in southwestern Wisconsin for the time being. All the rain is shifting off to the north and east and weakening as it moves in that direction. Still quite a bit of activity left back to the west across Iowa, though these showers and thunderstorms will be tracking to the east northeast over the next several hours. So we're not done with the rain just yet. Here's a look at your GFS future track forecast model plan on a wet day for southern Wisconsin. Several rounds of rain moving through temperatures will be in the 60s to around 70 here. Lesser of a chance for rain as you head north through the day today. Now, if you are traveling across the state this weekend, Saturday looks to be dry for northern Wisconsin. Most of Saturday dry for the southern part of the state. Sunday will be dry for all of us as well before rain returns then on Monday. So it could be wet for any parades that are planned on Monday here in southern Wisconsin. Temperatures this morning in the 40s to the north, 50s to the south. Not a huge change in temperature as you look across the state this morning. Here's a closer look at our viewing area. We have 51 this morning in Watertown as well as Juneau. The Dow is still at 51 as well. 54 in Prairie du Chien. Through uh, Madison, we're looking at 53 degrees, 55 in Janesville. Future track forecast model calls for a pretty wet start to the day with rain moving through this morning, diminishing by the lunch hour, so a little bit of a break in the activity. But after 4 p.m., here's that second round of showers and thunderstorms moving into southern Wisconsin. That will continue overnight tonight into early on Saturday. And again, some of those storms could produce some pretty heavy rain. Here's a look at your extended forecast then. We have temperatures. That will be a little warmer, a bit more humidity tomorrow, high of 80, chance for rain early, and then again, slight chance later on. Sunday looks dry, but then rain returns on Monday with highs back in the lower 70s. Here's our pet walk. Oh, this is the perfect activity for today. It is. Karsten and Wynn in Middleton play the eight. A little Love euchre, well. maybe? There you go. You think Euchre? Yeah. I don't know. I think you need two other players. He's got a lot of cards in his hand. <laughs> it's a lot of cards. Josh and I will be over in a bit. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hattie. You're welcome. Stay with us. The Morning Sprint is up next on News 3 Now This Morning.
653 time for the morning sprint. Memorial Day weekend is officially here and Hattie has an alert day forecast to tell us about. First though, lots of breaking news to catch you up on overnight. Let's start in Madison this morning where Mad Madison police are investigating a fire on the city's north side. It happened on Ruskin Street just off of Aberg Avenue a little after 930 last night. Police say someone who lives at the apartment building there reported two men forcing their way into the building. That resident locked themselves into the bathroom to hide and smelled smoke a short time later. They were able to get out through the bathroom window. Crews were able to put out that fire by right around 11 last night. The man who admitted to kidnapping Jamie Kloss and killing her parents will be sentenced today. Jake Patterson faces life in prison after admitting he killed Jamie's parents and held her captive for 88 days before she was able to escape. He said he wanted to plead guilty to spare Jamie and her family the pain of a trial. His sentencing is set for this afternoon. CBS This Morning will be live from Barron at the top of the hour. And flash flooding is possible across southern Wisconsin later tonight. A flash flood watch will start at 7 p.m. for southern Wisconsin and most of northern Illinois and much of eastern Iowa as well. Take a look at the radar map this morning. One batch of rain moving through. Another one further back to the south and west, though, will move through southern Wisconsin as we go through the mid-morning hours. Here's a look at your severe weather outlook today. That slight risk area does include Madison and all of southeastern Wisconsin. It's going to be a little cooler as well with those rain and the rain and clouds in the area. Temperatures will top right around 70 degrees later on this afternoon. Thank you, Hattie. Tornado watches and warnings continue across the Midwest and the South this morning, where at least eight people are dead and well over 100 tornadoes have hit this week. Flooding is also a concern in Oklahoma, where residents are at risk of a major dam failing along the Arkansas River. The severe weather threat is expected to continue through the holiday weekend. Breaking news overseas this morning as British Prime Minister Theresa May says she will resign in the coming weeks after her failure to get Parliament to agree on a Brexit deal. The UK has had to push back its departure from the European Union several times already. An election to find a new Prime Minister will be held in the coming weeks. May's resignation is effective June 7th. Breaking overnight, North Korea says nuclear negotiations with the U.S. will, quote, never resume unless the U.S. changes its position. North Korea has started, ba started back up its test firing missiles within the last few weeks. This comes as President Trump leaves today for a trip to Japan. Meanwhile, the president is telling the intelligence committee community to cooperate with Attorney General William Barr as he looks into what spurred the start of the Russia investigation. Congress still wants to talk to Robert Mueller about that investigation, but Mueller reportedly does not want to be in that hearing and, or for it to be public. If Mueller's testimony happens behind closed doors, a transcript would later be publicly released. The Milwaukee Bucks will head to Toronto this weekend with their season on the line after losing Game 5 at home to the Raptors, 105-99. The Bucks started the fourth quarter with the lead, but the Raptors were able to take the lead with about eight minutes left in the game, and they never looked back. Game six is tomorrow night. If the Bucks win, it would force a game seven back in Milwaukee on Monday night. If they lose, their season is over. We've been sharing the stories of women you'll see in this year's Susan G. Komen More Than Pink Walk all month long in our series, Why We Walk. This morning, we introduce you to Patty and Deb. They're now best friends, but didn't find each other until a chance encounter seven years ago. Both loved to shop, laugh, and travel with their husbands. They also both had and beat breast cancer before they ever knew each other. You can watch Deb and Patty, who now consider each other sisters. Full story up on channel3000.com. And be sure to join them in this year's More Than Pink Walk, which is two weeks from tomorrow. Thank you so much, Christina. 6.56 now. Let's turn it over to Josh Tim with a look at your Friday first alert traffic. Hey, Josh. Yeah, good morning. A wet start so far. Just make sure you have those headlights on throughout the morning commute, but otherwise no real delays to worry about on the Beltline quite yet. Inbound John Olin is getting busy around the Rimrock and Olin Avenue intersections. Expect some extra delays with Broadfest kicking off today. And other main routes coming into the city are moving at the usual speeds with no major crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thanks, Josh. Have a great holiday weekend. And it's a very wet start to this Friday morning. A live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Pretty gray out over Lake Mendota and downtown Madison early this morning. A little buggy as well. <laughs> Here's a look at the uh, Doppler track radar map showing you that the rain is flooding up a little bit here in the area. There will be a little bit of a break before that next round arrives mid-morning. Temperatures will top right around 70 today. All right, Hattie, thank you. And thanks for joining us, everyone. Make it a great weekend. We'll see you Tuesday.